it's my pleasure to welcome all of you here this morning, and, and in particular members of the public panel that were here last night for dinner and are back again this morning. So we're thrilled that you're all here with us today to help us celebrate the centennial of the magnificent club and mansion that has been the home of the American Red Cross since 1941. Uh, we have a very special treat for all of you today. Uh, Peter Clement, who is a great grandson of uh, Carolyn Tripp Clement and Stephen Merrill Clement, is here with us today. He's, a, he's an architect and um, serves as the official family historian. That's the way I think about you, Peter. Okay, he left this badge in but trust me. He's the official family historian, knows more about the, the Clement and Tripp families and the history of this house than uh, probably anybody that walks the earth. Um, typically when we have an event in this building, I always introduce the lady of the house, and that's the, the portrait of Carolyn Tripp Clement. Um, Mrs. Clement, uh, this was her home from 1913 until 1941, when she very generously donated this magnificent piece of architecture to the American Red Cross, and it's been our home ever since. So um, with that, I'm going to turn the program over to Peter, and thank you all for being here today, and we can't wait to hear what you've got to tell us this morning. I think it's coming now. There you go. This thing, you can yeah. if you want to use it. Okay. So, two, this is a familiar symbol to everybody. And this is a familiar facade. And I've turned it into an advent calendar. <laughs> <laughs> so, I think we can start with the people that came to town. Who, who, and we're, we cousins here in the net result. Um, this is early pictures of Buffalo. This is what Buffalo looked like in 1870. Uh, still a little rude. A little hut and the Erie Canal boat with the laundry drying. And this, but there's a steamboat, so we're kind of in the middle of the transition, industrial age transition. And that's what it looked like a uh, generation before, very small. Then it got busier, and this is an exaggerated picture, but um, the port became extremely busy and crowded. That's a, uh, that's a canal boat, this is a lake freighter, a modern lake freighter, and this is an older lake freighter. They were built like a bridge so they could span the waves without cracking. And that's one of the earlier grain elevators that was made, made Buffalo famous. So now we have the first family that came to town are the Trips, a little crop there. He came from a farm in New Haven, Vermont. Uh, his grandfather planted that elm in 1789, and this picture was taken in 1905, I think. So it got to be quite a big tree. So here's Augustus F. Tripp and his wife, Mary Steele, and two of their four kids. And then he worked for Sidney Shepherd and Company, which was a, included the Buffalo Stamping Works, which meant they made steam engines, and then they switched to metal works, including stamped and Japan and tinware. And their catalog, which was about two inches thick, had that, probably a thousand items that they made from little tiny cans to bigger things. Uh, nice things you could put on your desk and horse troughs. So it was an interesting company with a huge inventory to manage and he managed it. He was in charge of production. And then Stephen Mallory Clement, the father of this Stephen Clement, they confuse everybody by having two different middle names, but they were known as SM Senior and SM Junior because they were both at the bank and it was easier to keep track of them. So, farm outside of Syracuse, cash store in Fredonia, cheap, the cheapest store in Chautauqua County. <laughs> and uh, notice the lettering for SM Clement is made of logs. It's a great display of graphic design. <laughs> then he started a bank in Fredonia, which probably looked like the one above, and they produced their own currency, which was kind of like checks. Uh, then he was wooed away from Fredonia to the Marine Bank, and he became the president. Uh, and for the 
Harold Clements, that W.K. Allen is our great-great-grandfather on another side. Here's his uh, notebook from the, when he came to town, and it says, came to Buffalo to assume the cashiership of the Marine Bank. Uh, and then, then he sees very meticulous, but he says, took, or, you know, took the job at blank o'clock p.m. So he must have been excited. <laughs> <laughs> that was on Monday, Tuesday, so his first day of business as cashier of the Marine Bank. Very proud moment for him. So there he is as a young man with his wife, Sarah Leonard, and the older uh, sequence after that. So now uh, this thing tends to swoop. So if anyone feels queasy, I'll, let, I'll warn you when it's going to make a swoop. And you can close your eyes. So this is so. Where do you live if you've been become prosperous in Buffalo? This is a nice view from Westminster Church steeple. So uh, here's my trusty laser. This is North Street. This is the Wilcox Mansion, and these houses are all gone. Which is too bad. They're quite handsome. The uh, two, the Butler House is on that side. Of the, um, and so the Italian you can see the houses with towers. That was the taste of the day. You know, these cupolas like this. Well, there's a close-up. That, that had a conservatory. It's quite a nice house. And here's a fellow where it looked like with the trees. Um, you know, we're only about 20 feet tall. Now this is the corner of, this is summer, this is Delaware, and this is Oakland. So this is, um, these two houses are gone, but for the purposes of the next few slides, this is the Myron Bush house. He was on the board of Marine. And this is Fred William Gratwick, who was a lumberman. And then A.F. Tripp uh, bought this house in 1882. The house that was on this site in 1882 and before we leave the picture, this is where Stephen and, and Carolyn first set up housekeeping on the corner. So 173, not 773. Okay. Huh? Okay, so here's the Bush house on the corner. Summer Street going off on your left, Delaware going off to the right. It's quite a nice house. But you see the Italianate style? That was very much, this is a very fashionable house in its day with the big garden. It was considered to be the suburbs. This Delaware wasn't even named um, when the 786 was built. It was just called north of North Street. <laughs> so the Bush House was torn down in 1903, and this house was put up for Frank Goodyear by Career and Hastings, the people who did the, Buff the New York Public Library. There it is on the corner. And then this is the other side of this building. This is the uh, Howard House. He was another uh, board member of the bank. Another big pile of man, uh, Italianate architecture, <laughs> which was replaced by the Knox House uh, in 1913 or 14. Um, I can't remember the name of the architect, but it's obviously you can see the transition to more classical architecture in those two replacement houses. So now we're standing in front of the old 76 of the Fifth South. So this is the Gratwick House uh, with this big tower. This is the Bush House still standing, and there's uh, Westminster Church. <coughs> this is looking the other way. This, this is the old 786. This house is worth noting. It was the last commission for H.H. H. Richardson uh, before he died. It was started in 1886 and finished in 89. And it was on land that A.F. Tripp sold to Mr. Gratwick next to his house. And it's a shame it's gone. It was quite a pile. Mr. Richardson developed an art style that actually became known as Richardsonian Romanesque. One of the few architects that has a style named for him. <laughs> Uh, so here's the 786, um, built in 1850, probably only the central portion in 1850, then it was expanded. And there's the, the proud owner in 1882. Now this is the, uh, similar to the house that Mr. Clement built across the street at 737 Delaware. And then the competition heated up. This is a house next door. So, okay, take that. <laughs> So this was built in 1884, which is the most busy year for them, because that was the year that Carolyn and uh, Stephen were married. They were married in 786, but um, Stephen had been living in this, with his parents in this house. And there he is. And just a little reminder of what the streets used to look like in Buffalo. This is from 1971, and I'd love to have those back. Okay, now this is the young family. This is Stephen. S.M. Jr. or Stephen Merrill Clement I, whichever way you want to look at it, uh, in his college room at Yale. Um, 
meets the girl across the street, is married in front of the fireplace in the old parlor, which is this fireplace was removed and the mantle was removed and replaced, put in the master bedroom upstairs here. You can see it now. Uh, this is a bowl of uh, Carolyn. It's interesting, Carolyn Tripp Clement. She, she, in those days, she often kept her original middle name. So she was Carolyn Jewett Clement. So you can read that as a J or a T. I like that graphic is very versatile. So here's their wedding invitation. March of 1884, and nearly at home, Tuesdays, <laughs> May 6th and 13th, to greet their friends. And this is a passport photo where they were told to look grim, <laughs> which they pulled off. And this is the house that he built for his wife. It was kind of like a it was either a wedding present from Stephen Clement Sr. Uh, I assume maybe that was the case. So this is where most of their kids were born. So it's still standing on the corner of Oakland and Summer Street um, at the nice house, designed by E.B. Green. And this is a chance photograph. These kids were walking down the street and a photographer came by with a huge camera over his shoulder with a tripod. And Norman in the middle said, hey, mister, won't you take our picture? And so he said, sure. <laughs> it took 10, 15 minutes to set up the camera. But they, so here they all are. It's, uh, the, so here's Norman, the oldest of the five kids, six kids. Um, this is Edith, who died young. She's the one that we were talking about last night. She, as a baby, was, or as a five-year-old, was eating wallpaper, bits of wallpaper through a crib. And there was a very fashionable wall, wallpaper color that everybody liked in those days, which was very deep, rich green. And they got that green by using arsenic. And she eventually apparently poisoned herself, and they couldn't get her back. So that's very sad. And here's Merrill Clement. Guess which one became an architect? <laughs> so here they are, uh, cleaned up a little bit. Uh, this is my grandfather, Harold. This is Tina Tanner's uh, grandmother, Marion. This is Merrill Clement, who's an architect. This is Stuart Clement, who is actually a boy. And this is, this is Norman, the oldest. Keep, keeping track of Stuart. And this is a little bit, li not too much later, but out in East Aurora, they had a nice bench that went around in great big trees. So this, kind of think of this as a family tree photo. <laughs> and the same photo session, they parked themselves in front of their modest house in East Aurora. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I particularly like these things. They look like they're guarding the house. <laughs> and they have some reinforcements up here if it comes to that. So now, uh, back to business, this is the Marine Bank. And this is Buffalo's growing up now. They've got streetcars, mechanized streetcars as opposed to horse-drawn. There are more cars visible. So this is a very wide-angle picture. This is north on Main, south on Main. This is a Richard Upjohn Church, Louis Sullivan Building. This is a George Post, uh, Erie County Savings Bank, one of the great crimes of Buffalo architecture is that this was torn down. And it really put up a fight. It was um, made of uh, bearing wall structures, so it had 12 foot thick walls in the ground floor. So it took them, it cost them happily a lot of money to tear it down. <laughs> Here's a, this is a Lafayette Square with another shameful episode in Buffalo architecture. This is the public library that was torn down for and replaced by one of the blandest buildings that ever was conceived. A modern library building, but look at the streetcars on the carriages. Those are, look like handsome cabs waiting to take some people somewhere. Now, this is a scratchy picture of the second headquarters from the Marine Bank. This is where S.M. Clement the first would have first worked. Then they um, moved nearby. This is 220 Main. Uh, they started out. First of all, you have to eliminate that top floor using your imagination because that was an addition. The bank was in here. And then it was in here. So uh, SM Senior and Junior worked in those two buildings. And then, uh, so here's SM Clement President, SM Clement Junior Assistant Cashier, WK Allen's hanging in there as cashier, and JM Richmond, Stuart Richmond, who was a, uh, another board member as well as the vice president. He was a very in interesting guy. <coughs> this is a, a bill from the Marine National Bank. They were signed like checks. So Mr. LaSalle, who was a, the, uh, a cashier, I guess, and SM Clement 
probably every morning they'd spend 10 minutes signing these things, which must have been a little bit annoying. <laughs> so then uh, Stephen and Clement commissioned the, the Marine Tower, which in this picture looks very big. Uh, this is the Elegant Square building. Uh, it was designed by E.B. Green. They were very good friends. They, he, Green did the Stephen Clement Barn at East Aurora and um, numerous, numerous buildings in Buffalo. Too many to count, really. But that's what it looked like. Uh, it's a little fuzzy, but that's what it looked like. And I was working there briefly in the 70s. Uh, Gordon Bunch had to clean it up uh, for Seymour Knox, and it really was beautiful. This main banking floor was absolutely gorgeous, all down lights, and, uh, and unfortunately, I think it's empty now. I don't know what's being used for. But it's a great shame, it's a great space. So there's Mr. Clement. So now this is um, the family, the young family. So there's, this is Stephen and Carolyn, and this is AF Tripp, so we're putting them all together in this picture. This is Harold, Marion, Merrill, and Stuart, and the dog. The dog's name is Jet, for black, Jet is in Jet Black. This is a little bit later, this is the new generation, this is David Clement. Norman Clement, the oldest, is married to Margaret Hale, and this, this picture, this is that same front porch, the plants are been tamed, I guess. So there's another portrait of the two of them. And these are uh, portraits of Mrs. Clement. There she is in this room, at a writing desk, and I, I kind of picturing in this window, I'm not sure. And this is a pre-going off to war portrait of the four sons. Stuart, Merrill, Norman, Harold. So here's the, the clan. The Norman Clements, Edith, the Merrill Clements, the Harold Clements, Alexander Tenor and, and Marion Clement. Yeah, I should point out that this is George Tenor, their son whose daughter is here today. And these are the Stuart comments, and um, Stuart's still fighting his mother on the haircut scene. <laughs> <laughs> so here they all the grandchildren around and grandma for a birthday party in, out in the country. And then here they all are, threatening to knock that bench down, all standing on the bench. So those are three generations. Uh, my wife is prompting me to point out that Stu Clement is, the survivors of this generation, our, our parents' generation, are looking, press Stu and Larry and Petey, I think, is that one. And uh, I think that's it. You know, Stu is up here. This is a tray that's actually, you can see in the front room, it was given to Grandma Clement, Mrs. Clement, at her 80th birthday, and it has the signatures of each of the families by group, which is sort of a fun thing. And here's the uh, only candid picture I have of the house in use. This is the dining room, there's a Christmas or Thanksgiving meal. The women are wearing corsages and the men have boutonnieres. It's very formal, but it looks like they're having fun. And then the grandchildren are herded into another, another set of fish pictures. <laughs> and this one in front of the upper one in front of the fireplace, the lower one in front of the, or in the staircase. So now here we go, it's time for a new house. So here's Edward B. Green, with this very cool hat, who, um, and it's, I say here, it's difficult to underestimate Edward B. Green's influence on Buffalo's built environment. And I'm showing you like a hundred, 50th of his work. But the um, Albright Art Gallery, you obviously everybody recognizes that, and uh, some of these houses, the Rand houses now, Canisius High School. This is uh, further up, closer to Eight Circle. These, these two are neighbors on Delaware. This is on Oakland Place. This is the Buffalo Savings Bank, uh, which he designed first for the Pan American Exposition, made out of plaster, and then they made a real one <laughs> downtown. And then this is the um, that's the Buffalo Savings Bank, and this is the Genesee Building, which the estate of Stephen Clement built in 1924 with the Weed family. 
that's what the drawing looked like. And Merrill Clement was becoming an architect at the time, and he was uh, listed as the designer, probably uh, cutting his teeth with a good teacher, E.B. Green. So you have to mention competition at some point in this world of big houses, and this was the John J. Albright's house, which is considered to be the finest house in Buffalo by E.B. Green, and it really was a handsome house. Um, and this house is always called, after it was built, it's always called the second nicest house in Buffalo. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, time to pull out the, uh, get the draftsman organized. That's E.B. Green's drafting room. And here's, uh, this is the house is about to go. Dotted lines, not good. Save plan, it means you're going. So this is the proposal. And then here it is under construction. These are stereopticon slides. You can put them in a viewer and it would turn into a 3D picture. So they were quite nice. So there's the, um, the Gratwick House looming next door. So uh, the new 786 is born. First floor plan. You can see it's quite a big house when you drive by. You're, you're only seeing this and you forget how rich it is back here. There's a lot going on. The music room that we're in right now, and then this is the uh, this was an organ chamber where this bar is over here. So it has a pipe organ, and this was the uh, access to the controls, the motors and fans and things that ran it. And there's a this is the one the secret door. This is another one. They're a jar now. You can see them in the corner. And then this is a turned into a bookcase that you can swing open. So the grandchildren had a great time with those things. The uh, organ works included a little hole with a leather flap valve, uh, which built up pressure to run the organ. And my my aunt, Petey, used to go in when somebody was playing the organ, and she'd put her finger in the hole and poke the leather flap, and the organ would go, <laughs> And then there, there was a big chase around the house. This is the second floor. Uh, this is the upper part of the music room. And this is the master's bedroom suite, which is quite nice. Um, the, it includes, I think it may still be there, this is a steam, it, it looks like a steam bath, it's actually a bunch of light bulbs that made you very hot. <laughs> and this is the third floor, and now there's this wonderful suite of sitting room, bathroom, bedroom, up above the music room, that's where I want to rent the room in this house. And then this is over, over the entrance, I feature this because this is where the Christmas presents were wrapped and where they were stored, lock, under lock and key, despite the best efforts of all the grandchildren to get in there. So here's the house after it was finished. This tree uh, was in an earlier picture of 786, is in front of the old 786, and I think it's still there. This is a chestnut tree that was there when they were married. 1884 was a fairly big tree, and I think it's the same one. We've got an arborist to confirm that. This is the back with and without its awning. And that's the view of the garden from the, one of the terraces. That's the, the garage in the back had the, um, the boiler in it because Mr. Clement didn't want coal dust in the house. So my father always thought it was funny in the winter there was a, a band of green grass in the, in the dead of winter because the tunnel was still hot. <laughs> so here's the room that we're in. Um, it had a pipe organ, as I said, over back behind the photographer. The console for the organ is on the other side. There are two grand pianos. The two, uh, my great grandmother and her sister used to play duets. And apparently, they were very good at it. Uh, they had this is the tip of a harp, and then the, um, the boys had their guitars, mandolins, and banjos were usually piled up in one of the, probably in this niche here. Before um, radio, TV, or YouTube, they would come in here and play music after a meal. I mean, they really sang and played a lot of songs. It was a very uh, cheery group, I think. This is it set up for a wedding with the, um, the Marine Bank symbol, was the ship model representing the Marine Bank was over in the fireplace. There's a nice tapestry on this wall over here. Um, this is that writing desk where Grandma Clement was writing in that earlier picture. This is a, a set up for the wedding of Alexander Tenor and Marion Clement. Uh, in 1916. That's a very high altar. I hope they didn't have to get up there to do anything. 
Oh, but I, uh, there's a portrait over the fireplace where you'll see in that again in a second. So these are renderings of Stephen Clement. This is a photograph that's now, I gave it to the houses in the library. It's, it's a very big photograph. And that was out in the country. And then this was um, the picture you see on your left and the partner picture of Stephen Clement, both painted by Cecilia Vaux, who was a very prominent portraitist in the uh, time, around 1910. And this is a portrait that was painted by Edmund Tarbell, uh, that, uh, just a head, what would be called a headshot in the advertising business. <laughs> uh, and then he did this painting, which is lurking behind the screen. We're going to show it to you after we're done. It was done for the Marine Bank. It was in their executive dining room for years and years. And as of last night, it was dedicated in its new space in this room, which is great. Now Mr. and Mrs. Clement are back together again. But a nicely renovated portrait and the frame was spruced up very nicely. So here's the, the sad part about this is that he died before the house was finished and before his new office building was finished. So this is a his portrait in his office at the older bank in mourning with the lilies and the wreath over the top. Uh, in 1913. So he, uh, there's this tradition, as you know, of that this is a family picture of the tree in the window. And uh, so this is Mrs. Clement one more time and sitting in her writing desk in the niche where the tree goes. And this is it today. And this carries on as a tradition that the tree is still put in the window of the house. And that's it.